So it is crazy to think that 2023 could be worse than 2022, 2021, and even 2020. But that's the reality of the situation that we are currently in. We already know 2022 is going to be different than many other years. For instance, that Santa Claus rally that a lot of times we see during December, we're not going to see it in 2022. And according to many experts, 2023 will be the worst year on record. And I want to explain why. What's going on? What are some of these catalysts? What are some of the issues we are currently facing, but we are likely going to face going into 2023? And I'll just break this down. I'll be very direct. Things are looking not up. Things are looking somewhat down, all right? This is not going to be good, but I want to break this all down so that you can be prepared because over the past couple of weeks, I've received probably close to 10, maybe 12 emails and comments from people saying, you were right. I wish I was prepared. Now, before I get into some of the, the bigger issues that we're going to face, I also want to address one thing. Number one, interest rates are still going to be rising going into 2023. Number two, we will likely see inflation go up or it's going to stabilize. That is a problem because many people cannot afford to live in today's economy. But let's get into some of the issues that we are going to face in 2023. And let's break this down. And I, I spent a lot of time talking with other people, other people that are uh, preparing just like I have been, talking to financial experts, talking to advisors, business owners, just the average person. And every single one talked about some of these issues in one way or another. So let me break this down. First, Americans are spending money in times of high inflation. I've told people this before. I will say it again. If you can save money, if you can conserve, that will be the best thing for you. And I talked about this uh, back in 2020 and 2021 as well, and also addressed this earlier on this year, is I've sold multiple businesses, got out of different industries because I saw the writing on the wall. I knew what was coming, or I expected this is going to happen. So when I sold my businesses in 2020 and 2021 and put more time into investing and in other things, well, I did it for a reason. I knew things were going to get bad. Well, here's how things are getting bad right now. Our personal savings rate is 3.1%. That's down substantially from 2020 and 2021. Why? We got no stimulus checks and we are not going to get another one. We're also seeing credit card debt has surged to the highest record levels. This is a problem because in times of high inflation, if we don't have the cash, what do we do? We swipe the plastic. We use our credit card. Well, if we can't because we're maxed out, well, we're stuck. There's nothing else we can do. Consumers are not in the same position that we once were in back in 2020 and 2021, or even in the beginning of 2022. That is a problem because many people are still spending like they're in that exact same position. However, we're not. And another issue that I've seen a lot of people are having problems with is what do they do when they had money invested in BlockFi and FTX and other crypto accounts? Guess what? FTX, BlockFi, both filed for bankruptcy. The issue now that they're facing is they're trying to find the money to return customers' deposits. They can't find it. They're struggling to find the money. It's just gone. It's missing. This is a problem because billions of dollars are missing. Not tens of thousands, not just millions, billions with a B. That is a problem. That's a major problem when we are seeing billions of dollars just vanish of customer money. Because guess what? The average person that invested into uh, BlockFi or to FTX, guess what? They can't afford to lose $2,000, $500, 
I talked to a person just the other day who I've been able to uh, get to know, you know fairly well over the past year. He said that he was glad he took my advice. Okay? Again, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm no expert. I just tell you what I'm doing. He took my advice. He did not put money into certain companies. I'm not going to say what companies or I'm not going to give too much information here, but he was glad he took my advice. What he did do is he went on to Weeble, and I've told you guys this before, and there's a link down in the description box if you want to use it, but he went on to Weeble. He opened up an account. Okay, It's free to open up an account. doesn't cost you any money. He put in $5. That's it, just $5, and he got some free stocks. I think at that time he received like 10 free stocks or 12 free stocks. And he got those stocks and he took that money, which I think he said it was right around $80 of all the stocks combined. He took that money and he started investing that along with his $5. That was all he did. So if everything just, you know, you know, blew up and nothing was going good, right? All he would lose of his money was $5, not hundreds or thousands or potentially millions. So this is a problem. And one of the reasons why I say this is a problem regarding BlockFi and FTX is because experts have been telling us that financial institutions are going to struggle. They are going to struggle. But not only that, crypto has to become regulated. So guess what? The big issue right now is these are just two companies, just two companies that lost people's money. Okay, due to uh, not having regulation. But right now, there are very influential people that are urging Congress to act fast before this happens again, to regulate crypto. So again, this is gonna be a big change, it's gonna be a big shift, and I don't know which direction this goes. I don't know if this improves things or it makes things better, but this will likely happen in 2023. And talking about financial institutions, did you know financial institutions are limiting customer withdrawals? Yeah, they're limiting their requests. Here's what we've seen in the past, and I've talked about this before, where I went into a bank, I asked for you know X amount of dollars, they gave me half of it, half. Now it's not like I asked for 200, they gave me 100. I asked for you know, you know a few thousand dollars, they gave me half of what I asked for. Why? They didn't have it. They just didn't have the money. And they have to limit this, they have to limit withdrawals or else they cannot operate as a bank. But here's something you need to understand. This is now hitting investment firms as well. Just this week, we heard that Blackstone Real Estate uh, Invest or Income Trust, they started to limit withdrawals. Customers could not take their money out. But why? Well, here's why. They stated that withdrawal demand exceeded 2% of the net asset uh, value monthly limit and the 5% quarterly threshold. And as a result, they were preventing customers from pulling funds in order to prevent a liquidity mismatch. But the problem here is that customers need their money. If you're pulling money out of, a, of an income trust, you're pulling money out of an investment that pays you uh, every single month, right? Or quarterly, whatever it is. When you're pulling money out, that means you need it. You don't just need the income, you need the capital that you invested. There's usually a reason to that. There's usually a purpose. And if customers are needing to pull the money out and they can't, guess what happens then? We see utility bills go unpaid, credit cards go unpaid, mortgages go unpaid, right? Medicine, can't afford it. You can't afford to buy food, right? This, these are the times, these are the issues that we're gonna face. And the worry right now moving forward is what happens when more and more financial institutions are limiting withdrawals? What happens to the American people? And let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Does this worry you? If you have your money in a bank or a financial institution, if all your money is in one bank and they decide, you know what? We're gonna limit withdrawals to this amount of money or you cannot take more than this amount every single month. Does that worry you? Because it does me and it has, which is why I don't keep my money in just one bank. 
So this is obviously something that we need to watch moving into 2023 because my expectation is the withdrawals, they're, they're going to just increase or the requests are going to increase. But I believe financial institutions are going to come out and say, sorry, can't do that. So that's with that. But have you heard of this? Have you heard that there are some you know, locations within the United States that are actually considering bringing mask mandates back? Yeah, this isn't a this isn't uh, old news. This is new information. Okay, just the other day, Los Angeles County stated that they're very close to bringing mask mandates back for the entire county as COVID cases rise. Well. It's not just COVID cases. This is the thing, right? We got the flu, we got uh, RSV, right? We got all these different uh, things, these viruses out there. And what is uh, concerning to uh, you know officials is that hospitals could become overloaded again. And if they do, they might not have the, the workers right then and there, the doctors, the nurses, who are the staff, in order to accommodate all those people, right? This is the worry. Well, right now, according to uh, uh, Los Angeles County officials, they're saying that they are currently in the medium transmission phase, but if it reaches the high category, then they will reimpose mask mandates. Again, this is a this is a worry because back, and again, I, I wanna go back pretty much to like 2020, uh, explain in early 2021, you probably remember this, but let's say there was a mask mandate, right, in the county or well, pretty much everywhere, right? The issue was you had to have a mask. You know, I used to keep a mask, you know, on my desk. I don't even have one. Uh, I don't even know where it's at, right? I haven't worn a mask in probably uh, many months, uh, and I only did because I had to take a you know one of my kids to a doctor appointment. That was it. But outside of that, most people aren't wearing a mask anymore. Well, here's the thing. You go into a restaurant in Los Angeles County, there's a lot of tourists, right? You go into a restaurant and they say, ah, sorry, can't serve you, you gotta wear a mask. Okay, I'm gonna eat. Ah, sorry, gotta wear a mask until your food comes. Okay, sorry, well, I don't have one, I'm gonna leave. Or maybe the, the place offers you one. Sorry, I'm not wearing a mask, I'm just gonna leave. Here's the issue. If mask mandates come back, According to uh, reports, according to different studies, they say that if mask mandates come back, small businesses are gonna struggle because people will not go into their business. Now, again, if all, the, if all this comes back, small businesses are not gonna survive. We're already seeing small businesses are struggling because costs are rising, wages are going up, right? Uh, the cost to rent a retail space is going up, whatever. But at the same time, if you don't have customers coming into the door, they're not giving you any type of income, well, your business is over. That's gonna be a real problem. But again, this is just one county, but we've seen this before. When, when a county or the state of California does something like this, a lot of surrounding states, my state included, which is Washington State, they decide, you know what, that's pretty smart of that, that, that county or that's really smart of that state, we're gonna do the exact same thing. So be aware of that because it could be coming back. And have you heard of this issue? Did you know that right now there's a medicine shortage? Yeah, there's a medicine shortage that we're all facing. And I told people this before, this was, and this is really hitting parents hard, okay? Because what we are seeing right now is there are empty shelves where children's Tylenol and ibuprofen used to be and obviously other medications as well. And it's because of all the sicknesses that are going around. Well, this is something that I, I stressed many months ago. Get stocked up, have it, be prepared because this is gonna come. I told people this uh, back in 2020 as well, leading into the winter months that, hey, get medication, get it because it is gonna be in short supply. I told people this in 2021, that as we get into the winter months, cases are likely to increase. We need to make sure we have these medications. Well, I said it again in, uh, in August as well, to be ready because we've already heard of 
medicine shortages. Well, now we're seeing it. And again, this is a problem. The writing was on the wall. Okay, the writing was on the wall, but many people didn't believe it. They didn't buy the stuff that they needed. And now they're really struggling. So I want to leave you with one thing. Okay. You know, we talked about a lot of the problems. We talked about how 2023 is going to be potentially worse than 2022 and 2021, 2020, right? These issues just keep compounding. They do. But here's one thing I can tell you. We cannot control the medicine shortages, right? We can control whether we have it or not, but we can't control, you know, the shortages that we are seeing from manufacturing and, and all that, right? We just can't. But we can control uh, ourselves. We can help our loved ones, right? We can, you know, fix any issues that we have, right? Many of these issues that we are seeing, we see the writing on the wall months in advance. Just be prepared, right? Just be prepared. This means staying healthy. This means, uh, you know, staying in shape, uh, you know, eating right, getting enough sleep, drinking water, right? And as I say all these things, these are all things that I personally need to do as well, right? This month, and I, I, and this is usually something I don't, I don't bring up, but this month I made a goal for myself, and it's, uh, it's probably going to be an un unrealistic goal. I could hit it, but chances are I'm not going to. One of my goals uh, this month was to, uh, you know, here on this channel alone. Now I, I have many other YouTube channels, and I still do videos on those channels as well. But here on this channel, I was going to do four videos a day. Four videos. That's a lot for anybody to do, especially somebody that has other channels as well and other businesses. But I was gonna do four videos a day because I wanted to give people you know, all these answers that they've been looking for, whether it's on stimulus checks or on uh, you know, social security or uh, it could be on real estate investing or uh, you know, the other day I talked about uh, you know, ending child poverty. That's, that's not something that I've talked about in the past, but I, People have been asking questions, so I decided let me do a video on that. That's why I want to do four videos a day. Okay, over 120 videos just in December. That's a lot. But at the same time, and the reason why I say this is somewhat unrealistic is because I want to stay in shape. I want to continue to work out. Right? I want to eat healthy. It, which is it doesn't matter if I do four videos or one video, I can still eat healthy. But as far as getting enough sleep. That's something I've never been good at, but I need to improve. So that's what I want to leave you with today is 2023 could be a horrible year, could be very tough financially, mentally, physically, everything could be rough for every single one of us. But if we prep now, we're prepared for whatever's coming. I think we can get through this together. So. That's what I got for you guys today. Hopefully you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. If you have any questions whatsoever, please ask your questions down in the comment section below. Again, just wanna thank you guys for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Consider subscribing and I'll see you guys on the next one.